This is problem 7 in z-score standard normal in uh, web work. I'm uh, looking at one student's example of the problem and I've worked part of the problem already so that we can discuss it a little bit more quickly. Here's the idea. We've got uh, we're going to pick 30 uh, in uh, randomly selected Rolling Stones concerts and the mean gross uh, of those 30 we happen to know is 2.99 million dollars. Uh, we're assuming that the population is uh, has a standard deviation of gross earnings of 0 0.52 million dollars and we want a 99 percent confidence interval. Now I'm not going to talk in this video about what a 99 percent confidence interval means. I'm just going to talk about how to actually do the calculations to find it. So here's what I'm beginning with. Here's the distribution of all of the Rolling Stone concerts. Uh, I've drawn it as if it was uh, normally distributed. The sample size is fairly large, so the central limit theorem tells us that when we look at the distribution of sample means of that size, that that will be normally dis distributed. We know that the population standard deviation is 0 0.52. So the central limit theorem tells us that the mean of the population will be the, the, the mean of the distribution of sample means will be the same as the, distri as the mean of the, the whole population. Now we don't know what that is. Uh, our best information at this point is that it's 0 0.52 because that's the information that uh, uh, I'm sorry, that is 2.99. Let me redo that. That's a 2. Point, uh, what did they say? 2.99 million dollars, because that's what the the sample mean was. So that's the best information that we have here. We're not really sure that that's exactly what it is, but that's uh, that's the best information that we have. So the central limit theorem says that this mean and this mean will be the same. That this standard deviation will tell us what this standard deviation is. It will just be the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. That's what the central limit theorem is telling us. We're looking for this 99 percent to be centered here about this mean of 2.99. That means that the the 1 percent that's left over will have to be in the two tails. That means that down here, there'll be a, a half of a percent, 0 0.005, and up here there will be the other half of the percent, 0 0.005. So to find uh, this quartile right here, this quantile, that becomes an, an easy problem in R. We want to find that left boundary That'll be just the, the quantile norm of 0 0.005. That's this area back here. Um, in a population that has a mean of 2.99 and a standard deviation of, I didn't calculate that. I'll just let uh, web work find it. It's, it's this standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Uh, I did that calculation here. There's the calculation. I cut and pasted it here and, and checked to see if that was right. So let's worry about finding this next quantile. So now I'm looking for this quantile right here. So what I'm going to need to know is this area back here so that the Q norm can, can give me that, that information. You'll notice that I'm using a script editor now. Uh, all of you have a, a script editor with your copy of R as well. So what I'm doing here, I'm just making a note to myself. Find the right limit of a 99% confidence interval. That's just a, a note to myself. So when I come back to review this sometime, then I can save this script and be able to to remind myself of what I did. So I'm going to have to look at a Q norm. 
Now the area to the left of this quantile is going to be the 0.99 plus the 0 0.005. Okay, you see where that is in the picture? Look at the picture and it's the, the Q norm tells you the quantile when you know the area to the left of that quantile. So that's what we're looking for. That'll be where our upper bound is. Uh, this is going to be in a mean of 2.99 and a standard deviation of uh, 0 0.52 divided by the square root of 30. Okay, and then you do whatever you need to do in your script editor to either copy and paste that uh, down into uh, to the operational version of R that you've got going. There's there's my calculation. So I'm going to take that much. I'm going to copy that and just paste it in up here. Uh, let me see if I can recover those things so you can see what I was doing. So I was just copying and pasting that up here and now I'll check the answer. And wahoo! We got it right. Okay, hope that makes some sense. I didn't talk about what the what the confidence interval means, I just talked about how to calculate the confidence interval.